Okay guys, I was doing a video on my new purchase, this REL 25 sub, and I got off onto a tangent briefly about room treatments, and I was gonna stop, but then I realized, you know what, I need to do a video real quick on room treatments, because anything I'm talking about hearing with this sub is really, all, is not, it, yeah, it's related to the quality of this sub, and I've had another sub right there, so I know how much better this one is, but, it also can only be extrapolated if you have the proper room and room treatments and room correction. Uh, otherwise, you're only going to get a fraction of the performance um, of what you buy. You have to invest in your room, especially with base. So much of what you hear of base is your room. So I thought I'd go through the room real quick, uh, not to do a total comprehensive video, but to show you how much effort I've put into this room to get rid of all echoes, bass note, the bass is so flat. I mean, some people say it's impossible to get flat bass, but I'm, you know, I don't have that typical, you know, I don't have totally flat, but I don't have that typical huge cancellation and peak that you almost see in every room. This has evened it out why I use two subs. Another reason, as I highlighted in that first video, uh, there's multiple reasons for using two subs. Um, but anyway, Getting back on topic, room treatments. Very powerful. I recommend staying away from the dinky little stuff like this that you can buy cheap, doesn't do much. Go ahead and invest the money or find used, like I did some uh, really true base traps, corner traps filled with the rock wool insulation, the stuff, the, the high quality insulation. Find things like this. This one's actually too powerful. I bought one. I should have bought two to equal out. And then it creates some kind of phasey characteristics if frequencies are directly hitting it. So I try to put it here for the least amount of damage it does. Uh, so this is one that really doesn't work great in my room, but would work in other rooms. Uh, and especially if you have two, so you could even out the effect. Uh, but that's a lesson learned there I thought I'd share. This is great. I mean, I had problems with getting center image because the walls on open baffle speakers are I'm, I'm not equidistant on both sides. Okay, so this basically gives the reflection and the sound wave. It doesn't look all that great, but sound waves are now not hitting anything, almost like an anechoic chamber. They're not hitting anything equally, and that's what gives you a much bigger size of the room and allows the imaging much better. Uh, it doesn't look pretty, you know, everybody likes the symmetrical stuff, but when you do symmetrical, um, that's actually a bad thing. Um, and these little bitty patterns really don't do a whole lot. What you want to do is look at your entire wall and say, how am I breaking that up? Because, you know, the reflections are going all over in the wavelengths and stuff. You have to think of it more of in that respect macro looking at it versus these little bitty grooves don't worry about those things as much so giving it different surfaces big different surfaces even paintings and paintings like this that have insulation in the back cover a wide area these asc tube traps are probably my favorite but they're very powerful be very careful with these they can equally uh make things worse if you don't place them right i almost returned them i got them from 3ma but I found the right spot and then man, it made a big difference. And then I have the bottom half, which is a tube trap. You wanna usually put these base traps in the corner. Uh, little tip, if you don't have the money for that, I can't find some used that are good, cheap. Go ahead and get bookshelves. Uh, a bookshelf makes a great room treatment. Since my listening position is close to the back wall, I've got books and then I've also got I collect newspapers, banner headline newspapers, you know, ones that go all, the title would go all the way across. Um, I collect those over the years, so, but I didn't have a way to display them. So in the back, I've got nothing but a stack of newspapers that gives me, again, uh, a lot of absorption diffusion. Just makes it a lot less problematic of having my head close to the back wall on top of all this treatment. Over here, I've got the window treated with a film. I've got another one of these in the window sill to block uh, some of it. I've got Sterophile magazines back when they were decent, when it was a decent magazine, um, even a huge dictionary. These are great cheap room treatments you can do yourself. Bookshelves, using those kind of things, um, you can't really beat it because um, really the insulation is not that much different. 
Okay, so again, stay away from these kind of things. These kind of things, they're not, they're not ex expensive, but they don't do a whole lot. But anything to break up what would be even uh, type reflections that create echoes and, you know, anything that provides some level of even these little corner tracks. A little bit, but invest in the bigger ones is what I've learned over the years. Those are what important bass traps. And then I get really flat bass response here. Courtesy of room treatment, room correction, all of this goes hand in hand to be giving me what I talked about in this first video. Just awesome performance uh, that I'm preferring even over and playing songs that I'm preferring even over some of these mega dollar systems I've heard. But it's because of the room, not just the gear. So I'll be back soon, though, with more talking about the rail and some test tracks I've been using uh, to test the bass. I think you'll like that. And uh, even though you can't really tell, but uh, it's things that you can use at home and hopefully see for yourself uh, with your system where you benchmark. So anyway, sign up, subscribe, and I'll be back soon.